Getting a recipe published in a newspaper or having a food editor reach out to you as an expert for a story can really boost your site's traffic, give you some credibility, and put your blog on the map. Please welcome Addie Broyles, food editor of the Austin American Statement, as she moderates a discussion on how to leverage traditional media and get on a food editor's radar. So this panel is leveraging traditional media. Kat, would you call yourself traditional media? Um, I'm always surprised when I hear that said <laughs> because I, you know, I never um, meant to do this at all. I have a master's of fine arts in metal smithing and the <laughs> food blogging didn't really exist when I was uh, in, in college or in grad school or anything. I sort of fell into it by accident. Um, I had blogged about other things including um, an illicit affair I was imagining that I was having with Karl Rove, and, uh, and uh, various other things to uh, political satire bits. And um, I was an art director for the first 10 years of my career. And I was always just the art director who happened to really, really like to eat. Oh, go ask Kat. She probably knows where to go to eat. She knows something. And um, eventually the polarities flipped, and, and here I am. So I wouldn't say necessarily traditional. CNN's traditional. CNN is the parent of etocracy, and I would say that they are, but um, I'm not. <laughs> Nothing about you is traditional. <laughs> Um, but well, I was thinking about in preparation for this panel that it's just as likely that all of us would be at some sort of traditional media conference saying how to leverage bloggers for your beats because I think all of us, the reason why we're here is that we are open to working with bloggers and new kinds of ways of just interacting with our community. So um, if maybe we can start with Renee. You can sort of talk about what the blogging community is like in LA and, and how you work with them. Uh, we have a terrific uh, blog community in LA. Uh, it's really thriving, although I hear there's so many food bloggers here in Austin, so me, you, Austin may give LA a run for its money. Um, we're finding more and more that we are coming to really rely on food bloggers uh, for coverage, um, just because there's so many more of them and so few these days of us as the... What's your staff like? Um, our, we have, I think we have a staff of five, and that includes a test kitchen manager. Uh, the food editor. I mean, sure. we are just, every day we have to make hard decisions about you either do this or you do this because there's not enough time to do both. And we just don't have the staffing to do both. So uh, more and more are really relying heavily on bloggers to expand our coverage. And they, they do such a great job, so. I'm, I'm gonna ask you more about coverage. that in here in a minute about how exactly you use them, but go ahead, Jeff. What should I say? What do you do? Oh, I mean, tell, you, tell me what the blogging community is like. You said something interesting last night about the community in Tampa. Yeah, it's real tight. It's um, Tampa isn't really known as a sort of a, a tech savvy kind of place, but there's a real nice, warm um, sort of community there of, uh, of people who sort of support each other. Um, and you know, it's not very large, but it's very intense. I'm actually tonight. I'm missing. They call it a reunion, where they're bringing a bunch of food uh, food bloggers together uh, at somebody's house. They're having like a, a potluck kind of thing. Um, so it's not just online. They're they're you know. Uh, in real time kind of people, but um, they all kind of are learning at the same speed and, and sort of graduating to the next level. Um, and we've tried to sort of tap into that by bringing some of them into the newspaper as columnists, uh, sources and stories, um, you know, trying to get to that energy level and, and harness that. Um, you know, as on the newspaper side, you don't always have uh, a lot of tech savvy people, but at the same time, it would be ridiculous to underestimate <coughs> Uh, you know, I call them my neocons out at Sun City Center. Um, you know, they, they've harnessed enough technology to communicate with their grandchildren and their children in, in faraway places. And they have taken that dip into food land. And I'm constantly surprised at the, at the you know, the level of, uh, of skill that they have. So we kind of try and, we kind of try and marry the two sides. Um, and, and, you know, as much as we can really kind of grab at the energy, like I said. It, it's, it's just so powerful in Tampa, and it's just, it's, you can tell everybody's just sort of thirsty to be um, uh, more informed for what the local foods are in Tampa. Kat? Um, well, it's, uh, first of all, I apologize to my co-panelists for smelling like balsamic dressing. There was a bit of a gravity issue outside <laughs> and a wind issue, so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's funny because, uh, we work with bloggers in a totally different way because we're a national site. So I know a lot of New York bloggers would like to think that they're at the center of the universe. Um, but we have to 
keep a national perspective, which is really, really exciting uh, for us. We can't use bloggers as columnists, really. Um, we're, we're a staff of two within CNN, and we don't have a freelance budget, so we're in, in kind of a funny place. We don't sleep much. And uh, so the way that we do it is people within CNN can write for us, and, and we sort of tap in, into that. Um, so with bloggers, the way we work with them is uh, we have a thing called Blogger Spotlight. So we really look to bloggers who are saying a very particular thing in a very particular way about often the place where they live or a very specific passion that they have. And so while we cannot sort of employ or use or anything like that, what we can do is, is as we call it, like, you know, shine a spotlight on, on these people and really, because we really do support that kind of community. And I wish I had money to give you all. Sadly, no. <laughs> I think that's one thing that we all share is that newspaper budgets are just slashed. And, and in particular, in features and food, you know, our, you know, we don't have much money even to, you know, pay for ingredients, much less a space and a kitchen to test all the recipes that we run. And so, um, with the Statesman, um, we uh, will run blogger recipes, or I've used many of you guys in stories if you're doing something really interesting, like the food swaps. Um, you know, I got to sort of, I, at some point though, you guys end up becoming my friends, and so it kind of blurs the line. But I try my best to play, play with a straight face and, and play both, you know, and do that well. But, um, so you have columnists who are bloggers. Tell me about how they get in print. Well, it, it, basically what, what it is is that, uh, you know, I'll go out and do a story and I'll find I'll find bloggers, you know, doing you know subject searches or whatnot. That's sort of what happened with Jaden with Steamy Kitchen, is she was just starting to come into her realm, um, and she's relatively local down in Sarasota, Brand uh, Bradenton area, and she had a huge expertise. She t shot her own photos. She had a, a well attended blog, and I thought, yeah, that's perfect for us because basically what we would have her do is a short intro, a recipe. It didn't necessarily have to be Asian themed, even though her her blog sort of sticks to that. Um, I asked her to broaden it out, and um, and she did, and she shot her own art, and it was perfect, uh, beyond newspaper quality art, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> that's a whole other blog <laughs> seminar. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of happens that way where our, where I, I use our local blog sort of as a, a way of keeping my ear to the ground. Um, people write about something. Um, I don't see it as a territorial thing, and, and I, I certainly am not offended that somebody else found the best Ruskin tomato before I did. I, I just want to share that they found it and give them full credit for it, you know. So, so I'm always write, looking for those sources. How does that work? So when, say you find, so somebody found this great place for this mm -hmm. great thing. Do you write about it in print and say, you know, such and so found it and here's their URL or? Well, it kind of bleeds all the way through. I mean, it, it kind of starts, I'll be out in the field and I'll be like, I got to tweet this big, you know. So I'll tweet it and then uh, some representation of it will show up on Facebook. And then eventually, like, I do a weekly column uh, in addition to all my other stories that uh, the weekly column will, will sometimes feature those bloggers writing about that, that certain thing. We have uh, two uh, collegiate um, uh, food bloggers out of their dorm in Tallahassee, for instance. And I wrote about them. And now we're actually considering, they, you don't know this, I'm going to call you on Monday. Um, we're, uh, we're considering bringing them in as, uh, as columnists because they've got this fresh new look at, at, uh, at cooking. So they're your freelancers? Uh, they're not even our freelancers at this point. Yeah. It's, it's just people that we, we use as sources. Um, no, but I mean to do the column. That's a freelance column. Correct, yeah. yeah. We, we would so hire them. you'd be them paying them. Yeah, and not, not, yeah. not, not big, you know, P. Diddy money or anything, but we, we do, we'd actually, newspaper dollars. <laughs> New, <laughs> newspaper quality dollars. photos, newspaper dollars, <laughs> yes. But yeah, we, would, we, would pay, we pay them as, as contractors. Renee, how do bloggers in L.A. either get their byline in the paper or get used to sources? You know, it's very hard to, to, for bloggers to get their byline in the paper. I think that there's still a resistance to, um, uh, to doing that, unfortunately. But we are making some inroads. I, I, I think that's a great, I, I, I think it's great to get as many voices as possible in the paper. So uh, one of the things that I've been doing is um, uh, we're doing a reader recipe swap. Um, we are asking people if they uh, make one of our recipes from our test kitchen to photograph it and if they write a blog post about it. I then link to that. Last week I feel like I had a personal victory. I had, uh, I convinced them to put a blogger's photo in the paper with a little mention, which I know that may not seem like a lot, but for us I was just like, yes, because it was a beautiful photo. I mean, it was just an outstanding piece of art. Um, and it was a recipe that we had made. So um, I'm hoping that people will do that more and more, that they'll uh, try our recipes and then let us know how it turned out. And it doesn't have to be good or bad. This person took the recipe and actually changed a lot of things 
and that was fine by me. Um, so uh, we try to do um, a lot of linking online. So much of it is, is online at this point. Hopefully we'll start making some inroads. The problem is our section can be so tight. We used to have a two section food section. Now sometimes our food section is four pages. Yeah, so, so, you know, it's just, it's just so, it's becoming harder and harder and harder to get into print, unfortunately. But I, that's one thing I feel like probably all of us become advocates for you guys, and and oftentimes we are facing editors who who do have their doubts about either the quality of the recipes. I remember when I first started running these recipes, my editor, who's not my editor now, different guy, was just like, well, how do we know that they didn't just make it up? And it's like there's a, there's a level of trust there that and that and that's where I think you guys can start to reach out with the food editors or m traditional media in your communities to form a relationship with them, so they don't. Th just, you know, you're not just some other person online who happens to post up a list of ingredients and directions. I mean, I, I trust what you're doing because you're putting so much time and effort into it. But I feel the same way about the photos. They just, they were freaking out at the beginning when I pitched that. But now they're much more willing to do it. And plus you guys take great pictures, so. One of the concerns with, with bloggers, at least in our newsroom, is that we have to abide by a very strict code of ethics. And there's a concern that perhaps bloggers aren't doing the same thing. Not that you're doing anything illegal, but if you, for example, I, I had a blog post about somebody who um, wrote about uh, Nutella. And she had a picture that had the jar of Nutella in the picture. And I can't tell you how many editors were stopped it and said she must be getting money from Nutella. And I went, I, before I even pitched it, I said, are you anyhow, in any way related to them? But that is a concern. If we somehow put that in the paper and somehow it came out that she was getting some kind of an endorsement or something from Nutella, it would be a disgrace. So there's there's a feeling of, well, how do I know that you're not taking money from the people that you're writing about? Or how do I know that you know that you don't have some cozy relationship? Or even that that's your best friend? Um, and that people feel very So how do you prove about. that? How, do, how can they prove that to you? Um, I think that you can do that in your about page. Like if you just be very forthcoming with what types of relationships you have. Um, and then when it's all transparent, then I, I don't really think there's an issue. Once becomes transparent. Then I you mean, disclosure is, I'm sure, right. have, has come up a lot today and will tomorrow just about when, because people are going to be approaching you more and more as, as bloggers gain recognition, um, sponsors, potential sponsors, uh, you know, products, marketers, junkets. say junkets. junkets. That, I mean, that, it's hard to turn down a free trip to Bermuda or Europe <laughs> or Portugal for a wine tour. I mean, especially, well, that was one of the things when I first started this job, I just couldn't believe it. I was getting these offers for all-inclusive trips and it's like, I want to go. I can't afford to go. And but you have to set a standard for yourself, and you have to set the bar high. But then when you set that, tell everybody about it. Don't just keep these rules and play by those rules, and and not because that's how you gain cred credibility and clout. And if you are taking that trip to Italy or doing something, but you're writing about Nutella, which had nothing whatsoever to do with your Italian trip, one thing doesn't cancel the other out. I would not say, oh, I would never work with a blogger who has these deals because everybody is trying to make a living, is trying to make some money. You just have to be very transparent. And if there's ever any doubt, just be forthcoming with the editor and say, here are some issues I just want to bring to your attention. I don't think it influences me in any way, but I just want to be upfront with you. And then they know that you're somebody that they can trust for that.